Hey, what's up everybody? Tony with Lalita Luca. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about travel documentation. Specifically, we're going to talk about the process I went through to get a Chinese visa. Now you may or may not know it, but I am going on a cruise to Japan that departs from Shanghai, China in less than 50 days, going with fellow YouTuber and friend Don Terrace from Don's Family Vacations. And uh, Don is Canadian, I'm a US citizen, and so this video will be the perspective of the US citizen, but if you are Canadian, or if you are interested in seeing what it takes for a Canadian to get a Chinese visa, Don has released a video exactly at the same time I have. Uh, go check that out. Uh, and see what Don had to go through to get his Chinese visa. And just a little bit of a spoiler, it cost me a lot more than I thought it would. Again, thanks for stopping by the channel. If you're brand new here, if you're into cruising, consider subscribing. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell on so you don't miss out on any of our content. Before we get too deep into it, let's talk about what visas are and how you get one. A visa is a travel document that says you are allowed to enter and to exit a country. Not every country requires it. The only time we've needed a visa in our cruising experience so far is when we went to Havana, Cuba, we were required a visa to enter and exit Cuba. And what a visa is, is it is a travel documentation that sometimes you carry with you, uh, but many of the times it is a document that is affixed to your passport. That is the case for the Chinese visa. And to get a Chinese visa, you have to present your passport at a Chinese embassy or at a Chinese consulate. Now presenting your passport at a Chinese embassy or a consulate is no small task. They are not in every city. They're in some of the major hub cities for international travel. There is a Chinese consulate in Atlanta. There is a Chinese embassy and a Chinese consulate in Washington, DC. And so you can, you can make the trip to those cities or you can engage a service that will help you get your Chinese visa. That's what I did. Uh, this isn't the first time that I've applied for a Chinese visa. Back in 2014, I worked for a global company as the IT operations infrastructure manager, and I had a team based in Beijing and in Shanghai, China, and I was scheduled to go visit them, which required me to get a Chinese visa back in 2014. I went through the whole process and the trip eventually did not happen, but I did get a Chinese visa. And when I did it in 2014, I engaged a company called CIBT Visas, and they kind of facilitate that process. You actually send your passport to them. They walk it over to the Chinese consulate and they handle all of that aspect of it based in Washington, DC. And that is what I decided to do this time. Now, what wasn't super close in my memory is when I did that in 2014, there was a cost associated with it, but I was working for a company and that was all a business expense that I didn't have to pay for out of pocket. And I don't even remember what the cost was back then. It didn't seem like anything because, well, I, I wasn't paying for it. Okay, so here is the checklist that CIBT sent over and I will go through each of these items and I will tell you what exact documentation I provided uh, for these line items on this checklist. Now the first item is a passport. Pretty straightforward, you have to have a passport before you can get a Chinese visa and you have to send that passport. Again, you either have to walk it over to the embassy or the consulate yourself or you have to use a service, they need your passport to do that. Number two is a recent photograph and it needs to be formatted in a certain way. I feel like on my one in 2014, I just went to the drugstore and I got a passport photo and sent that in, but there was a whole lot of information in CIBT's uh, documentation that said a general passport photo will not work, has to be a certain size, has to be formatted in a certain way with a certain color background, and uh, you're going to Walgreens to get it is not going to work. They recommended that you use for a fee their photograph service and look i'm all about convenience and that is what i did i took a photograph here at my house i used photoshop a little bit to make sure that the white background was super white i submitted it through their online service and uh, it was approved as a photograph that they could use so that's what i use for line item number two on the checklist item number three pretty interesting letter of invitation before you can go to china you got to have a reason to go to china back in 2014 i was going for business i had to get a letter from the local management of the facilities that our company owned inviting me to come to china uh, to work for the period of time that I was going to be there. But when you're going there for a tourist activity, for a cruise, 
uh, you can provide documentation around that trip of tourism that will satisfy it. There's a whole list of documents, but I had to have two documents. I had to have my airplane ticket. I had to show when I was going to be coming and leaving the country. And because I was going on a cruise, I had to provide my cruise itinerary. Printed off my airline documentation. I printed off my cruise itinerary and included that in the information that I was sending to CIBT. The next item, the proof of residency. They want to establish who you are and where you live. And this one's pretty easy. You can provide your state issued ID that has your home address on there. So I just used my driver's license, made a photocopy of that to establish that I was who I am and where I live. The next item, the CIBT visa form is this form. Uh, the part that's blacked out at the top includes the order number, some personal information about me. So I had to include the sheet so they knew what they were working on. Uh, I don't know if I had to check the items off, but I did have to include all the documentation on this checklist. The next item is the visa application form. This is the official form that you have to fill out that's going to be presented to the Chinese consulate. Uh, and you'll see it's in Chinese and in English. All of the fields have to be filled out. Uh, there's a certain thing you have to put if you're going to use NA. Uh, so this is the actual uh, get you into China form that you have to fill out and that has to be included with this packet. The last item is embassy registration. CIBT will actually notify the embassy that you are going to be there. They will notify the American embassy in China so that you are on their radar, that they know that you're traveling in China in case anything goes wrong. Uh, this is an optional service. I, I wanna talk a little bit about optional services, but before I go there, there is a program that the United States government has called the STEP program, and it's essentially the same thing. You can register your travel with the STEP program and they will alert the embassies where you're traveling that you are going to be there. I'm going to do a video about the STEP program. I think it's important. It's a free service that American travelers can use uh, to let embassies know where you're going to be at. That video should be out within a week and I will leave it linked above and in the description below once it goes live. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see the STEP video that's coming out soon. But yes, I did not do the embassy registration because I knew I could do that through the STEP program. So here's, here's the interesting thing about CIBT visas. And again, part of this video is about how much it costs. Uh, their service is not completely straightforward and, and not in a deceptive way. It's not straightforward because they don't know which services you're going to use or which services you're going to need. For example, depending how quickly you need your visa, they have a regular service and they have an expedited service and they don't really know which one of those is going to kick in until they actually go through the process of taking your passport to the consulate, taking this documentation to the consulate. Uh, if it takes longer, it could cost more. And so they have a few services. So like the picture service, was an additional fee. And when it comes to filling out the uh, Chinese visa form, when you get to that point in the application, there is a line that says, if you want us to help you fill out this form, if you just want some simple boxes that you can put your information in, click here and you'll be engaging the document service. The cool thing about the document preparation service is I did send them all my information, all the information that was required for the Chinese visa, things like when I was gonna enter the country, where I was gonna stay out in the country, what kind of work do I do? What's my job? Uh, what's my family members? Those kind of things. You provide a lot of information on that form. And so I provided all that uh, in, you know, fill in boxes on the CIBT website. And then they take all that information and they populate the Chinese visa form. And then they send you the Chinese visa form for you to sign. And then that goes in this packet. They have to have your original signature. That goes into this packet. And then you ship everything off to CIBT in Washington DC. I did that because I didn't want to mess up the visa, but at, it doesn't like pop up and say, if you use this, it's going to be this amount of money. There is some, there is some language there that says that it is an additional service and you will be charged. But again, it's not like, it's not like a big pop up that says, if you use this, it's going to cost X amount of money. And, uh, uh, maybe you guys can help me decide later if that X amount of money was worth what I paid. Uh, but yes, so when you're doing this, when you're working with a company, uh, just be wary that there, there could be some fees baked into it that you're not really paying attention to. And me, I, I get super hyper frenetic. I just wanted to have my documentation done. So I'm just engaging any part of the process I can to make it easier. And uh, you know how it is. Sometimes when you opt for convenience, 
there's a cost that goes along with it. So just a word about how long it took me to do all that, the, the process of uh, starting, getting everything filled out, getting the picture made, uh, getting the information back from CIBT, filling out the form, getting everything signed, getting it packaged up, took me about half a day, it took me about four hours, four or five hours. I got all of that data there together, copies of my driver's license, uh, you know, cruise itinerary, all the things that were required for this checklist put it in the package. It came with a prepaid FedEx shipping label, took it off to FedEx, and I overnighted the package to Washington DC to CIBT visas. That was on Thursday, August the 4th. And once they get your information within 24 hours, they verify your information, and then they take it over to the Chinese consulate. So I sent it off. Uh, a funny story is the whole time that I was working on it, uh, I had my passport on my desk, but somewhere along the way, uh, my lovely wife, Jenny, went to check us into a cruise, and so she snagged my passport off my desk, along with her passport out of where we keep them, uh, got us checked in, and at the end of that process, she put both passports back on my desk. Now, they both look exactly the same, and I had this moment after I sealed up the package and gave it to the FedEx worker and was halfway home from FedEx, did I put in the correct passport? I, I got really paranoid. I feel like I was working off of my passport all morning, but I know both passports were on my desk. And there was a good like 15 minutes till I got home where I was freaking out thinking, wow, I must have just sent Jenny's passport off to Washington DC. Sometimes that happens to me in life. Sometimes I make mistakes that cost me and I was sitting there worried that maybe I did. Uh, fortunately, when I got home, Jenny's passport was still on my desk and I did not make a mistake uh, on sending off that packet or so I thought. So that was Thursday. The gentleman calls me from CIBT on Friday about 1030. He, they got my packet. They reviewed everything. However, I had signed my Chinese visa application in the wrong place. Let me show you what I did. This is the last page of the application. When I printed it off my printer, it printed out in black and white. I was so excited, they sent it back. I just wanted to get everything to FedEx. So I saw at the bottom of the page where it says signature, I signed it, I dated it, I put it in the packet. Now, as you can see on the PDF, there is a red arrow next to where I was supposed to sign. But again, I printed this off in black and white and I didn't even look at the page. I just saw a signature and I signed it. So I, sent, I signed in the wrong place. And so my application and my signature page, they could not use it and they actually have to have my signature. So the guy's like, look, you need to print that out. You need to sign it in the right place and you need to FedEx that over to us so that we can have it for Monday so that we can take it to the consulate. So I did that, I printed it out, I signed it, I went back to FedEx and this time there was no uh, prepaid shipping label. This was on me because I made the mistake. So we've now added a $33 FedEx charge to something that, uh, that if I had just signed in the right place, uh, it wouldn't have cost me. They also needed some other information from me. I am self-employed these days. I don't make money from a nine to five. So they needed a clear description of what my job was, how I am self-employed. And I had to actually write out like a paragraph saying, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is why I'm going to China. I had to sign and date that. And I had to stick that in the envelope with the correct signature page and send it back to CIBT visas. Uh, that was on a Friday. It was gonna arrive there on Monday and the rest of the process would continue. So the rest of it was a waiting game and without much fanfare, they got my uh, corrected documentation, they got the extra documentation about self-employment, they took it over to the consulate, the consulate reviewed it, and I was approved for a Chinese visa. I got an email saying that I was approved, and I was approved for a 10-year Chinese visa. So uh, now I am good to go to China for the next 10 years. Uh, it came back to me on the 13th of August, so all in all, it was about a 12-day process. And again, it's a 10-year Chinese visa. That means I can come and go to China for the next 10 years without requesting any additional paperwork. But my passport is going to expire before 10 years, so I just wanted to note this here. Chinese visa is attached to the inside of my passport. And so now, once my passport expires, the Chinese visa will still be valid. And if I wanna to return to China after my current passport expires, I have to take my old passport with the visa in it along with my new passport and I will be able to gain entry into China. 
In addition to sending back the visa, they also send back the invoice. Have you started to think in your head how much this was going to cost? So the first fee on the list is the actual cost to get the Chinese visa. This is the cost that's established by the Chinese government. It's 140 US dollars. It provides me a 10 year tourism visa. And so now for 140 bucks, I am good to go. The second fee is a CIBT visas fee. This is the cost that they charged me to actually facilitate the service. It was their standard service. It wasn't a rush. That was $199 for them to actually process, take my paperwork over to the Chinese consulate and do all of that aspect of getting the Chinese visa. Now the decision I made to use the nice web interface at CIBT visas and have that information transferred directly onto my Chinese visa application, uh, that was a decision that cost me $80. So because I decided to not try to fill out the Chinese visa application form myself, four page form, kind of complex in hindsight to save $80. I definitely would have tried to do it, but either way it worked out and I do have peace of mind that they filled the form out, got everything correct for me. And look, it's just good marketing. I, I was, by reading through the documentation, I was worried I wasn't gonna fill the form out correctly. And yes, I engaged the service. That that cost me $80. This next item, I, I don't remember what my choices were for getting the passport sent back to me, but I used the United States Postal Service, the next day air, which I feel like was the cheapest option, 46 bucks. Consular processing fee, I don't think I knew that that was going to be a line item. I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was in the documentation. 5.9%, uh, $8.26. Again, the photo service, uh, very well marketed. I was worried that I couldn't just submit a random photo or passport photo from Walgreens. So I engaged the photo service, $26. And the last one, the passport replacement coverage. Again, I don't, I don't remember signing up for this. I don't know if this is something that is added to everybody. I don't even know what the benefit is there. I'm assuming that if my passport gets lost uh, or the visa gets lost, they can replace it. Uh, I've got to look more into that because I paid for it. Uh, $40 for that. Okay, so when you tally all that up, that's $509.26. And you also have to add my $33 made a mistake fee to that. So that becomes $542.26 for a 10 year China tourism visa. That's that's pretty expensive. I didn't think, I thought it was gonna cost two or $300. There are a couple add-ons that I probably could have avoided here, but pretty expensive. The service was pretty seamless. Again, uh, I probably could have filled out the form on my own, but even with them helping me fill out, fill out the form, I did the wrong thing. So who knows if that would have worked out. Uh, again, I don't know what this replacement service is, but yeah, so I, I'm in for like 540 bucks. I'm, I probably could have done some of those things on myself and not spent that much money. But again, it's one of those deals where I didn't get the total until the end. Probably if these numbers were flashing in my face every step of the way, I might not have spent this much. Here's, here's the thing. If you travel to Hong Kong, you can do that on your passport. You don't need a visa. If you're traveling for a cruise from Shanghai, if you're traveling to Beijing or Tayen, you can be in China for 144 hours as long as you are leaving to go to a foreign country and coming back. So you can fly in. That's six days. I possibly could have not spent anything and just used that 144 hour exemption but we are spending a couple extra days in China. We're gonna do a few things. And so didn't wanna risk it. Uh, and I felt like it was worth spending the money on the Chinese visa. Again, it, it feels fairly expensive and I'm kind of motivated to go back to China just to get more value out of this Chinese visa. Look, it, it honestly, it's all roses. I am super stoked to go to China. We're gonna do some things in Shanghai, gonna go to Disneyland, gonna jump on this cruise. We're gonna go to Japan. It is going to be an experience like none I've ever had in my life. And I'm super excited that I get to do it with, a, with my friend Don Terrace from Don's family vacation. Again, he went through this exact same process from a Canadian perspective. I haven't talked to him about the numbers. He doesn't know how much this cost me. I don't know how much his cost. Uh, he's, his video is out right at the exact same time as this video. Uh, I need to go watch it. I, I, I don't know if it cost him anything. I'm gonna, look, I'm not gonna be mad at Don if it didn't cost him anything, but did it cost him as much as this? Uh, I gotta go check that video out. So let me throw it to you. So I've spent a lot of money to go to China. I'm okay with it. I know I made some mistakes along the way. Let, let it be a cautionary tale 
take your time, slow down. This is something I still don't do well in my life. I paid a lot of, and I believe this is the financial guru, Dave Ramsey, I paid a lot of stupid tax, just doing stuff uh, so quickly without thinking and I've paid extra money. Do you have a do you have a stupid tax story? Share that. This is expensive, but I think it's worth it to go to China. I would love to hear your feedback. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please consider subscribing to the channel. I got some more cruise videos popping up for you. Go check out Don's video. This is Tony with La Lita Loca and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.